The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate various reading and viewing strategies for comprehension and appreciation. Learners should be able to infer the meaning of unfamiliar words or images in familiar contexts by using knowledge of grammar, word attack skills, contextual clues, sound, color, design, placement, and by using the senses. I think you're eating too much into it. Maybe, but it just makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, to you perhaps. I didn't see it that way. Hi guys. Hi Becky. Hi Becky. You know that cop we saw yesterday when we drove through town? Mm-hmm. Well, I think he was parked there to take a break. But then Tabby is positive he was about to bust the street vendors. She's getting into a total state. What makes you so sure? Well, have a look here. The guy seemed to be parked very strangely, and he seems to be ducked in his seat as if he didn't want to attract any attention. I just really thought that it looked really suspicious. I also saw he was ducked down into his seat, but I just think he was too tired. So you guys both saw the same thing, but you actually read it differently. Yes. yes. Well then, why don't you hold that thought? Because today's lesson is about inference. And maybe by the end of this lesson, you might have some different ideas about what you saw. Happy? Okay. Sure. Hi there, I'm Becky, and we're back with more ideas on how to read your world. Over the last couple of lessons, you have learned a great deal about how to read your world. I hope that you have been practicing these skills. Today, we're going to find out how to infer meaning. That means that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define the meaning of the word infer. Explain how inferring meaning can help you to understand a text. Infer meaning in texts. Let's start with a little experiment. I'm going to say something and I need you two to listen very carefully to what I'm saying. You guys at home can try too. Ready? Ready. Yeah. Mpumi practices and plays violin for three hours every day. How do you guys think and feel about Mpumi and her violin? I just think you're amazed how committed Mpumi is. What makes you say that? The way you said it. You sounded like you were in awe of Mpumi. And your facial expression also helped. Okay, let's try it again. Mpumi plays and practices her violin for three hours every day. Now I think that you think Mpumi's a bit nuts. Again, what makes you say this? Well, your tone was quite scathing and you kind of shook your head while saying it. Okay, so what have you learned from this? Well, while you speaking, we're not only listening to your words, but how you said them. This gave us clue to how you were feeling. Exactly. Each time I said the line, I implied something about Mpumi and her violin. And you had to work out what I was implying. You used clues such as how I spoke, the tone I used, my body language, and my facial expressions to work out what I was implying. You were therefore inferring meaning. Inferring meaning? Yes. Much of what we understand when listening, we understand indirectly, by inference. We read between the lines to pick up clues, and then we use those clues to decide on what the speaker means. A speaker will imply something, and a listener will infer something. This is exactly the same in reading. A writer or artist will imply something, and a reader will infer meaning from the text. But the clues are different because we can't see the writer or hear the writer. Absolutely. When reading, we have to use clues in the text to help us infer meaning. So the word infer means to surmise or conclude by looking at evidence. I'm sure that you all know the meaning of the word evidence. We hear about evidence every time we watch a detective or cop show on TV. Sure, detectives look for clues and then use the clues to conclude what they think happened. They use the evidence to solve the mystery. So when we infer meaning, we use clues and evidence to draw conclusions. Exactly. But even detectives can go wrong sometimes. That's true. The way you read a clue will impact on the conclusions you may reach. That's why when inferring meaning, we are generally reading between the lines. Now have a look at these sentences. What meaning can you infer? 
The empty boat drifted in the middle of the lake. The empty boat bobbed in the middle of the lake. Share your ideas with a friend. So? The second sentence seems more positive than the first. If the boat is drifting, it's almost as if no one is in control of it. So maybe something has happened to the captain. But if the boat is bobbing, it sounds as if its anchor is down and maybe everyone has just gone for a swim. So you see, by changing a word in the sentence, we can shift its meaning. Now here's a quick task. Infer meaning in the following sentences and then share your thoughts with a friend. John ran into the road without looking. When I left the house this morning, there were branches and leaves all over the road. Yesterday, we had to clean out our desks and take everything home. So guys, how did you do? We did okay. We used the words, the sentence structure and the grammar to help us infer the meaning. And most of the times, we agreed. And so then, how does this discussion help us to resolve our story about the cop? Well, we've been looking at inferring meaning in speech and written text. How can you use what you have learned to work out what is happening in your visual text? I suppose if we re-examine the picture and look for clues we've missed on it. Absolutely. So let's take another look at the picture. What meaning can you infer from what you see? Make sure that you take note of everything in this picture because anything could be a clue. When you are sure you know what's up, turn to the person sitting next to you and share your ideas. Now guys, let's see if Ntabi and Ken have managed to come to any conclusions. Okay guys, please explain to me what you can see in the picture. I see a police van parked alongside the pavement with its hazard lights on. No, it's not a police van, it's a metro police van. They're the guys that look after the traffic. And when the hazard lights are on, it means they're not staying for long. I see some street vendors selling on the pavement. Yes, but they don't seem to be worried about the metro police. So why are the police parked there and why are there some guys in the back of the van? Well, they cannot park alongside the pavement because there's cars parked there already. And the guys in the back of a van are wearing blue shirts. They seem like cops' uniform. Hmm, I wonder why they parked there. Oh, there's a no parking sign. Maybe they're giving tickets to the taxis parked on the side of the road. That makes more sense. I suppose so, but we'll never know the truth. Of course not. When you infer meaning, you're drawing conclusions from the information that you do have. This means that you need to look at the context very carefully. By the context, you mean circumstances or situation, don't you? Yes, exactly. It's only after you and Ntabi had actually gotten to look at the picture that you reached your own conclusions. You guys actually looked at the context and you came up with your own clues, exactly like detectives. Yes, but we still don't know the truth. Absolutely. You will never probably know the truth, but at least you now have a negotiated and common understanding. Ntabi, why do you think that the policeman was about to arrest a street vendor? Well, I suppose I jumped to conclusion. My aunt sells in town and the police have now told them that they may not sell there any longer. One of the cops was quite mean to her the other day. So that's been in your mind all day. And you, Ken? I don't know. My brother's good friends with a cop and he's a really nice guy. So I suppose every time I assume all the cops are okay. So what does that tell you? It's about what you already know. Maybe if I had a policeman as a friend, then I'd feel the same as you. That's exactly right. So you can see how careful you need to be when inferring meaning. Don't make assumptions unless you can support them. When reading or viewing, you must remember that a text, whether a visual text such as the picture we've just examined, or a written text such as an article or story, is never fixed. A text does not contain a set or final meaning. When you read or view a text, you're constructing meaning building it. This means that as a reader, you use what you know about language and society to make sense of what you're reading. When you infer meaning, you bring what you know, think and feel to the process. You infer meanings based on your social customs, shared knowledge, shared experiences or shared values. You make sense of a text by recognizing implications and drawing conclusions. In this way, you read ideas more than words and infer rather than find meaning. It is therefore quite easy to get sidetracked. Always make sure that you carefully examine the context and don't jump to conclusions. Rather take your time and make sure that you can back up the decisions you make and what you wish to say. Okay, let's see if you can remember what we have learned about inferring meaning. 
Meaning in text is not fixed, and so you always have to infer your own meaning. Inferring meaning is about reading between the lines in order to understand a visual or written text. When inferring meaning, we are drawing conclusions by looking at evidence. Always consider the context before you draw a conclusion. Always carefully examine all the clues before you draw a conclusion. Your prior experiences and your values and attitudes will impact on the conclusions you draw and therefore what you infer. Being able to infer meaning makes you a more critical reader, so it is important to practice the skill. Here's a final task for you. Remember to carefully gather your clues. Consider how these clues help you to infer meaning and draw conclusions. Also remember to consider what the artist could be implying and then finally discuss your ideas with a partner. Here is the text. Join us in the next episode when we look more closely at inferring meaning in visual text. From all of us, goodbye. Bye. Bye.